What's up everybody, I'm Spencer from Pixel and Bracket, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to point with your fingers. No, how to design a minimal logo in Adobe Illustrator. This here is the logo that we'll be designing. Now, when it comes to minimal logos, there's really nothing overly complicated about them. If you search Pinterest or Google Images for minimal logo designs or inspiration, you're gonna find a lot of stuff that has squares and different shapes around them and just uh, one color, the word, the name, maybe the subtitle established, something like that underneath it in all different variations and forms. So I'm probably gonna tackle a lot of different minimal logo tutorials, um, very simple things like this, but in this one, we're gonna be creating something where you can insert the company name, have a square around it, and have a sort of subheader or secondary title underneath it. So let's get started. I'm gonna start a new document can go up to file new command in or control in on PC. I'm going to do 1920 by 1080. Uh, that's in pixels. Doesn't really matter too much. Uh, and I'll create that document. So here we are. We have a new artboard. I'm in the uh, latest CC 2018 workspace, the essentials workspace. And I'm going to reset that really quick. So all I have over here is my properties panel currently. We're going to open up other panels as we go along. Uh, so I'll take I'll take you through that in case you are either in the older version or aren't sure what the heck I'm doing. All right, so let's begin by typing out a name. Now when you're when you're choosing a font, so the type tools over here, the shortcut key for that is T. Uh, I can just click on my artboard and start to type. Uh, so we'll just type out company name. Um, I'm just holding Shift with this. Although you could also just type it out and then over here in your character panel, if you don't see that, if you don't see any panel, they're all up here, window and then drop down, uh, there's all the panels here. So in the character panel, in the uh, options or more options here, and it might even be in the paragraph panel, there's this little all caps button. You could click that instead of holding shift or doing caps lock throughout the title. Uh, and I'm actually, I'm actually gonna click that. So there we go, got it clicked. Company name is written, but it's super, super tiny. So quick way to scale that up is just to use the selection tool, grab a corner, and I like to hold shift and option. That's shift and alt on a PC. And we'll scale him up pretty large so you guys can see him while we design this. There we go, we have company name in the basic Myriad Pro font. Now I wanna change that font to something else. And you're always gonna to wanna to select fonts for your logos. I like to use Typekit. If you have uh, the Creative Cloud, you have access to Typekit. So I'm gonna switch over to that really quick. Here it is. But even if you get on like a free font site, uh, I don't know, 1001 fonts or dafonts.com, these just type in free fonts to Google. There's tons of free sites. They all kind of work the same. You have a space where you can type in what you want to say and to uh, sample your font. So I'm gonna type in company name. And now I can see all of these different fonts and examples of how company name looks in each of those fonts. And I can scale this down a little bit. The controls will be different on whatever site you're on, but they're all relatively the same. You'll be able to pick like a sans serif, which with a minimal logo, I'd recommend a sans serif, but sometimes that serif can provide a classier look. It just depends. We're gonna use sans serif in this one. And then you can uh, scroll down through here and pick and sync your different fonts. Try to pick one with a lot of different variations in it. For instance, this basic sans has 14 fonts. More than likely, when I click in on it and start to look at all the fonts, it has extra light, thin, light, regular. Even ones that are condensed or narrow and have all these different type of variations are gonna provide you a lot more flexibility when building your logo. So I've selected to use DIN 2014, which I believe is a typekit font. So we're gonna to switch to that. I'm just gonna switch my font to DIN 2014. And we're gonna start with, uh, and, and luckily now Illustrator actually previews. So as you go down and select your different font here, it'll preview it and you'll be able to see it. I'm gonna select bold. We're just gonna start with a nice bold uh, company name. So I'm gonna switch in the paragraph here to align it to be centered. And then I'm going to center it on my artboard. So I'm gonna do that by getting the alignment panel, which is up in window, down to align, that's shift F7, and he's gonna pop up somewhere randomly down there for me. I'm gonna drag him over here next to this properties panel, and then I'm going to use this little sort of collapse button, and then I'm gonna just move this over here so I just have a set of icons, kind of like my tools on the left side. So I grab my alignment panel, 
I need to show options. That's this little hamburger menu, show options. And now I get all my options for the alignment panel. Sadly, it's a little bit more complicated to do that these days, but I'm gonna align and make sure I'm aligning to the artboard. Make sure this is selected center and center, both vertically and horizontally. Good to go, he's in the center-ish, and I'll get into that later. So next thing I wanna do is just draw a square around this thing. So I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool. The shortcut key for that is M. I'm gonna kinda of eyeball a rectangle around this. Good enough, that looks pretty good. Now he's gonna come in probably filled with a color. If it's just default, it's gonna be black. So I'm gonna get rid of that fill by clicking on that and clicking on the slash. Then I'm gonna add a stroke to this. I'll just click on that guy and we'll add a black stroke to that. Currently it's one point. Now this is where a little bit of design comes into it. It's not so simple just to copy. It depends on what you're doing, how thick your font is. I don't want it to be this thin, that stroke, that rectangle around my company name. I want to kind of, I guess a good rule of thumb for me is to sort of match whatever the stroke weight is of the font. So when I look at this E, the line there, I kind of want to match the thickness there with this box on the outside. However, you can break the rules, you don't have to. In fact, that's not even a rule, I'm just making that up. So I'm going to select maybe 10 points and see what that looks like. That's pretty close. I like how uh, the relationship is here. Now, obviously, you can go too much, right? So if I did 100 points, okay, we're talking a little too much there. So this is all sort of eyeballing and getting a feel for the design of it. One other thing I might do is change that stroke by clicking on the stroke drop down to the outside. I'm going to align it to the outside, this one here. That way that no matter what I change this stroke weight to, it's always going to expand from the outside of this bounding box, which means it's never going to encroach on my company name, so the logo name inside of it, which is nice because I can change the stroke and I don't have to adjust other things like the size of the rectangle or anything. So I'm gonna bring this down. Uh, you know, you could go with something pretty bold if you wanted to, but I'm gonna select something. That 10 was pretty close. We're gonna try 15. Uh, that's really close. We'll, we'll stick with that. Um, we'll do 15 on the box. You know what? I'm getting picky here. I'm going to do 12 on that because I felt like it was just a little too thick. So there we go. I like that. And I might even bring this down just a touch by holding shift and option, grabbing it from the corner. That's shift and alt on a PC. So just kind of getting that in there. Now the company name, this box right here, this rectangle, we haven't centered it yet. So let's grab the alignment and we're going to center this horizontal and vertical. That's to the artboard. You might notice something. Company name is no longer centered. Well, why is that? That's because when you have type, like live type, editable type, there's actually some space underneath this. See, it's centering on this bounding box that goes around the outside of this. Now, there's reasons for that that I won't get into, but I will show you how to perfectly center this towards the end. That'll be one of the last things we do. For now, we can just sort of hold shift and drag that down a little bit and kind of eyeball it in there while we're editing this because we want to keep it as editable as possible as we work through this. So there we go. We have the, uh, the, the rectangle shape and the company name in there. Now, what about like a little subtitle down here if we want to sort of cut into this? So we're going to cheat this a little bit. I'm going to grab the rectangle tool, and with the fill, I'm actually going to do white or whatever color this background is. Now, if you want to just grab that, like if you're working in the gray space, you can hit the I key for the eyedropper tool, and you could eyedropper that, and that'll send that color, whatever you eyedropper, to the uh, your fill color. Uh, I'm going to select the white here because I want to sort of blend it into the white background. And the reason I want to do that is because, like I said before, I'm going to keep this thing as editable as possible. I'll show you how to finalize it, but we're going to keep it as editable as possible. All right, so I'm just going to draw a rectangle. I want to make sure this rectangle will, from the height standpoint, cover the line that goes around uh, this here, the stroke that goes around that. So I want to make sure it's tall enough to cover that, and I'm just going to draw uh, sort of random whatever I think, whatever I need to put underneath here. We're going to start with that sort of like established 1984 type of look. Um, but so I don't need that much space, but I'll show you how you can expand this later. Uh, let's grab the selection tool. We're going to grab this. I actually want to send this guy a range that's a right click, arrange, bring to front. I want him on top of everything because as I drag him up here, I want him to cover up uh, this 
stroke. That way it kind of appears like there's a cut in there. Now I also want him to be centered, so I'm gonna grab that alignment panel again and make sure he's horizontally centered. So we know that he's perfectly centered with everything. Everything's centered on our artboard. Um, if I wanted to, if I'm not on the artboard and I wanna center him to this rectangle, let's say he's spaced out here, I can actually click on this guy shift click on this rectangle and then without holding shift click on that rectangle again i'm now aligning to a key object that key object is the one highlighted in a stronger blue color and i can center on that so that would be how you would center him if you're not all just on your artboard okay cool so i've got that there now we need to type something in here and i'm what i'm going to do is just grab this as a starting point so i'm going to hold option or alt click and drag company name down that's going to create a duplicate of it now what do we want this to say? Remember T for the type tool. I'm gonna to click this. I'm gonna hit Command or Control A to select all. And then we're gonna do uh, established with a little period and we're gonna do 1984. Alrighty, back to the selection tool. We want this guy to be smaller. Another design thing coming up. It's all about relationships, hierarchy. We definitely want him to be smaller, but the question is how much smaller? And that really comes down to feel, what you really want it to look like. You want it to be readable, especially when this logo gets small. You want it to be readable. Uh, so we're going to start with this. And we're going to bring him up here and just kind of lay him in there. And then, of course, he's apparently behind our, uh, our white shape. So we're going to right click on him, arrange, bring to front. And he's going to pop to the front of that white shape. So we've got this guy on top, white shape next, and then the rectangle underneath. All looking like we actually have cut into that rectangle. And the reason I do that now, now that we have text in here, is because this rectangle, we can actually hold Option or Alt and just grab the uh, sort of horizontal arrows here. We could scale him in and out. You know, if this said, um, if this said like Mountain Resort, you know, we would need that to be a little bit larger and we might bring him back in a little bit to here, right? So depending on what you're typing down there, you can scale this in and out, and uh, it's all editable for now. We'll go back to that established look, 1984, and I'm going to continue to sort of edit this type because I think it's just a touch too bold. So I'm gonna go back over here, and this is where those variations in the font come in handy because I can select a very light version and see what that looks like. Maybe you like that look. Um, you could even expand it out a little bit. So the uh, letter spacing here is a sort of V and then A and the arrows underneath. Maybe I want to expand him out by like 50 points. Uh, that way it gives a little bit of letter space. In fact, I want to do that to the company name as well. Maybe I'll expand him out by 25 points just to give a little breathing room in that. You know, I would never use sort of the default font. What it comes with, I would always sort of customize it a little bit. Now, I think this is a little too thin, or maybe it is just too thin for my liking. And so I'm gonna go with something like the Demi version of it instead of the bold version. So just go with the Demi. That way it's nice and readable even when it gets small and we space those letters out. So that's good. And everything is centered pretty well. So that, I mean, there we go. We, we've got this little company name logo design. So I'm gonna grab this whole thing. This is my editable version. I'm gonna bring him up here, just right there. I'm gonna hold Option or Alt and I have everything selected. And I'm gonna hold Shift as well just to keep it lined up. We're gonna bring this down here. Okay, so we have two copies. I'm gonna leave this one alone up here. This guy down here, I'm gonna finalize and make sure everything is perfectly centered. So how am I gonna do that? Well, with the company name, I want to outline that text so that the text becomes shapes. Now, luckily, there's in the Quick Actions Properties panel, there's this little Create Outlines button, so you can create that. And now all of my texts are shapes. You can also do Shift-Command-O or Shift-Control-O. I do that all the time. That's one of the shortcuts I recommend learning. So now that I have this all selected, I can hold Shift and select my rectangle. Click my rectangle again. Remember, aligning to key object. Use the center horizontal and center vertical, and it's just going to nudge it right perfectly into place. Now, we still have this sort of floating rectangle that's hiding the cut, right, that we haven't even made yet. So I'm going to drag this estimated stuff down here just to get it out of the way. I'm going to select this rectangle and select this rectangle. Now I'm going to go over to my Shape Builder tool. 
that's shift M and notice how it sees everything what I want to do is actually hold option and subtract out what it sees is the path right in between there so this rectangle goes underneath and as it crosses over this rectangle the shape builder tool sees that and if I hold option or alt and click on that red highlighted uh, line it's going to remove the uh, the stroke from that rectangle underneath this shape. Now I still have this shape there, so if I hold Option again and click on this shape, and that's Alt on a PC, remove that shape. So now I actually have legitimately cut. There's no more shape there. We've removed it. And I can then create outlines on this estimated, or estimated, established 1984, so we'll create those outlines. And I can bring this up here and smart guides will help me align it in the center and uh, there we go so we have that completely centered up so now this logo here we can group that by right clicking and hitting group or command G and that is your perfectly aligned finalized version of your minimal logo design now I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this tutorial and learned a thing or two. Uh, one thing I would do, so I would get this guy out of here, right? And I would move this guy, so we've grouped him together. We can align him to the artboard, to the center. And then with this, we can save him, so file, save as. You could pick a spot wherever you want to save him. Uh, but what you can do for vendors or anybody you're sending this logo to that you want it to be uh, in vector format, I would select EPS. EPS files are very standard vector files. Name it, save it, and you're good to go. Um, that's one of the files. If I'm sending a logo to someone, that's the type of file that I send. You can also send a PDF. You can also send the Illustrator file itself. Uh, so that's that's kind of something I would work with now cool thing is all of this stuff here um, is well not all of it is expanded so we're gonna select this entire group go up to object to change the color I would go up to object come down to expand expand the fill and stroke and then let's say you have well, we should be good we should be good I know it has a question mark on the fill but we should be good let's say you want to go with a solid color for your company maybe it's a red color you can now that everything is a shape just change the fill of everything to change the color of everything so maybe it's brown kind of an ugly brown color I don't know but you can change colors like that very easily um, you could let's say we go to white we could then make a background with the shape tool I'm just kind of I'm just kind of expanding on this tutorial a little bit now and you could select this shape change it to black send it to the back remember right click arrange send it to back and now you have a reversed logo right so that's just how you can sort of iterate on the logo that you've created change the colors expand the shapes um, illustrator is a great program I recommend using it for logo design I hope you guys learned something in this tutorial. I'm sure I left some things out. I'm sure I'm going to kick myself for some of the things that I didn't explain. Uh, but I'm going to get better at these little minimal design logo tutorials. Uh, like this video if you like this video. Make sure you subscribe for more tips and tutorials. And I will see you next time.